Well, it's been a while since the Apple keynote speech where creepy Uncle Steve unveiled the iPhone 4G, and indeed today is the day of release. And here's a very quick look at some of the new features on it. And I don't mean new features in the operating system version 4, I mean the new physical features of the iPhone 4 itself. Ready? Here we go. Yes, body-wise, it looks very different to the other iPhones. Well, not very different, a bit different. It's got an aluminium band around it, with all the buttons and things on, as a result it's squarer, a slightly chunkier feel to it. Feels better in the hand, I think. But uh, yeah, in fact, overall, I much prefer the look of it to the other iPhones, but I'm an old-fashioned type. I like my technology to be chunky and preferably smelling of oil. Um, but otherwise, buttons, well, you know exactly how it is. The only real physical differences are you've got a camera on the front now. Hello. And you've got a SIM slot at the side instead of the top. It, of course, uses one of those irritating micro-SIMs, which means you've got to get busy with a pair of scissors if you don't want to get a new one. Also, there's a tiny dot there, which I believe is a noise-cancelling microphone to uh, make your calls slightly better. Guts-wise, it's quicker, of course, about a third quicker than the old 3GS from what I've seen of benchmarks, but also about a third slower than the iPad, which is interesting, considering that they share many, many components. I think the obvious answer to that is that they're not running the components at full speed in this in order to save battery life, which is fairly sensible, especially considering the appalling battery life of its predecessors. Screen resolution! You've now got four times as many pixels in the screen from the new Retina display thingamajig. And I'll tell you what, mate, it doesn't half look lovely. No, seriously, it does. Look how high res this is. Look at it. Look at the stupid, stupid icon which always says 23 degrees sunny no matter what the weather's actually like being really depressing. Why won't they change that? Anyway, sorry, <clears throat> that's irrelevant. Okay, feast your eyes on that. Now let's swap it with the iPhone 3GS. Yeah, looks kind of Blocksville, Tennessee, doesn't it? Not quite that bad to the naked eye, but uh, to say there's a bit of a difference would be an understatement. And hopefully with the increased resolution, the app makers will be doing some clever stuff with that as well soon. Right, photo-wise, the camera is massively improved. Um, that's not saying much, of course. It was rubbish in the 3GS, and in the previous 3G and 2G models, it was like a sort of cheap webcam. Absolutely awful. Uh, here, for comparison, is a photograph of my dad's shed taken in lovely daylight on the 4G. And for obvious comparison, here's the 3GS doing the same thing. Hmm. And with less than perfect lighting, here's a photo I took on the 4G of a blatant advert. And again on the 3GS. Going back to the 4G there, you will see it has bizarrely muted out the brown of the sofa into a strange grey. That's not a particularly good thing. Also, of course, there is now a flash on it. At last! Man, it is hot here today. Uh, yeah, so 720p high definition recording, uh, very good quality for a phone and a camera, and it must be said it's doing a good job in the horrible dingy conditions around me that I forced it to film in. Uh, do we want to see this scene on an iPhone 3GS? No, we really don't. And if you're wondering what footage from the front facing camera looks like, uh, a lot like this. So there we go, a very quick look at some new features. Is it worth the money for this lovely new handset? Well, that's something that's entirely between you, your bank manager and your credit cards.